For the latest Marvel Cinematic Universe news updates, visit HybridNetworkYT.com. Hey guys, it's Tim coming to you with a brand new Marvel film related video for this week. So with Tom Holland confirming the plans of a Spider-Man trilogy in the MCU, I thought I'd take this time to look at how I think they should do the upcoming sequels to Spider-Man Homecoming. This isn't going to encompass every aspect of the movie, like subplots or every character who I think will show up, but this is just a general breakdown of how I think the sequels should go. Also for the time being, I'm going to leave out any character who is already tied up with the Sony Marvel movies, so I won't be including Venom or Black Cat in this. So first off, with Homecoming 2, if they're not in Homecoming 1, then this would be the time that the Osborn to be introduced into the Spider-Man film franchise. Similar to how Bruce Banner tried to recreate the Super Soldier Serum by testing on gamma radiation, Norman Osborn is attempting to do a similar type of serum to make a better, stronger being by combining the DNA of humans with animals. But at his current stage of development, his serum makes the person, instead of gaining the abilities of the animal, mutates them into a half-human, half-animal hybrid. But after seeing news reports of Spider-Man, someone who keeps a humanoid appearance but has the relative strength and speed, durability, reflexes of a spider, he decides to move his operations to New York and fixate his attention on Spider-Man. Meanwhile, Peter's in his final year of high school, and while he's still trying to balance the Spider-Man aspect of his life with his normal life, he's getting a better handle on the whole superhero thing by this point. At the start of this new year, a new kid named Harry Osborn, the son of industrialist Norman Osborn, transfers into Peter's class. Peter and Harry, due to their numerous differences from one another between how they were raised, their statuses, etc., initially don't like each other, but are paired up to work with each other in their science classes. Harry, not being strong in the sciences, sees that Peter has an aptitude for them, and tries to use his intelligence to bolster his own understanding of it to impress his scientist father. Which eventually leads to Peter being in the Osborne home, and Norman seeing Peter's aptitude, and inviting him to have a paid internship at Oscorp. And at Oscorp, Peter's working under Dr. Kurt Connors, who is one of the people responsible for the development in Norman's current theorem. Meanwhile, Norman has begun to experiment on people using his current serum with a variety of different animals in order to draw Spider-Man out by essentially creating supervillains for him to fight. The first of these being the MCU equivalent of the Rhino. After these various attacks, Peter is able to track the serum in the Rhino's blood back to Oscorp, and more specifically the department he's working in with Dr. Kirk Connors. Spider-Man confronts Connors, and Connor explains to him that the reason he works on the serum is in order to regrow his arm, as well as aiding various people who are missing limbs as well. And he explains to Spider-Man that he had no idea that his serum was being used this way and had no intention of it being used this way. Connors confronts Osborn about this, and Osborn uses an unstable version of Connors' theorem on Connors himself, transforming him into the Lizard. Peter and the Lizard fight, he's eventually able to transform Connors back, and Norman Osborn has Kurt Connors arrested for his rampage as the Lizard around the city. And this is before Connors can explain to Peter what Norman is doing. And that's just a general idea for the first sequel. So for Homecoming 3, Peter is becoming even closer with the Osborn family, as Norman, behind closed doors, is getting progressively more and more desperate to get Spider-Man's DNA. He contacts a Russian mercenary under the name Craven the Hunter in order to track down Spider-Man and get a sample of his blood. Peter, meanwhile, is starting up at ESU, with both Ned and Harry as his roommates, and there's some clear tension there between the two of them. At some point, reports start to come in of Kirk Connors in jail going wild on people and acting more animalistic. For the first time since he was arrested after this, Peter is able to have a visit with Dr. Connors, who explains to him 
what Norman Osborn had done to him, as well as the fact that something in Osborn's serum caused a secondary lizard personality to be created. So even though he's not transforming, he still has a secondary personality of the lizard. As Peter becomes much more wary of Norman Osborn, Kraven is able to get the sample of Spider-Man's blood after various altercations with one another, and Osborn finds out two things from it. Number one, how to stabilize the transformation in his theorem, and number two, that Peter is Spider-Man. Fearing what could happen with someone with Spider-Man's power being that close to his family and being his enemy, Norman tests the serum on himself, and this gradually begins to form the Goblin personality. The Goblin begins to attack the city initially before the personality begins to settle in with both his and Osborne's knowledge, and once the two start working together, they begin attacking Peter on a more personal level. This all culminates in the Goblin capturing Peter's current love interest at the time, whoever it happens to be in that moment, and eventually faking his own death to avoid prosecution. This drives a rift between Peter and Harry, who had been getting closer to Norman while he was going through the Goblin transformation, leaving it more so open about what happens between the two after this if Harry becomes Peter's villain or not, and it's revealed that Osborn's still alive and the Goblin and Norman Osborn personalities are starting to merge more into one personality to go after Spider-Man and Peter Parker. And those are just some general ideas for where I think the Spider-Man Homecoming sequel should go, but what do you guys think? What would you like to see in the Spider-Man Homecoming sequels? Well, as always, let us know down in the comments, and if you're interested in hearing more Marvel film related videos, feel free to click that subscribe button and the bell next week to be immediately informed whenever a new video goes up. But until next time, this has been Tim from the Hybrid Network, signing out.